From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. These are the cybersecurity headlines for Wednesday, July 31st, 2024. I'm Sean Kelly. Delta enlists Microsoft's legal nemesis over CrowdStrike losses. Delta Airlines suffered an estimated $500 million in operational losses due to the CrowdStrike update that caused a widespread Windows OS meltdown. Delta has now hired famed lawyer David Boyce to review options for potentially clawing back some of the funds. Back in 1998, Boyce served as the DOJ's special trial counsel in the Microsoft antitrust case in which the tech giant was found guilty on most charges. If CrowdStrike's terms and conditions hold up, however, there may not be much Delta can do to recoup its losses. In addition to its operational and financial woes, Delta is feeling pressure from regulators to explain why they've struggled more than other airlines to recover from the incident. Dark Angels receives record-breaking ransom payment. A new report from Zscaler Threat Labs has revealed that an unnamed company paid a record-breaking $75 million ransom payment to the Dark Angels ransomware gang. Zscaler did share that the company was in the Fortune 50 and that the attack occurred in early 2024. The record-breaking ransom payment was further confirmed on X by crypto intel company Chainalysis. One Fortune 50 company that suffered a cyber attack back in February is pharmaceutical giant Sencora, ranked number 10 on the list. Sencora is not confirmed it made this particular payment. Dark Angels launched back in May of 2022 and is known for big game hunting and using Windows and VMware ESXi ransomware encryptors. Previously, the largest known ransom payment was $40 million shelled out back in 2021 by insurance giant CNA. Meta to pay $1.4 billion biometric lawsuit. Meta reached the record-breaking $1.4 billion settlement with the state of Texas to resolve a privacy lawsuit. Texas filed the suit back in 2022 and accused Meta of violating a state law prohibiting collection and sale of facial recognition and fingerprint data without explicit user permission. The company's stock price dipped briefly Tuesday when the settlement news broke, but then rebounded. The latest settlement is unlikely to weigh heavily on Meta, who made a profit of over $12 billion in the first three months of this year. Back in 2021, the company then called Facebook agreed to pay $650 million to settle a similar case in Illinois. Microsoft services go down again. On Tuesday, Microsoft once again found itself grappling with service outages, this time seemingly unrelated to CrowdStrike. The issues appear to have affected Microsoft 365 Admin Center, Intune, Entra, Power Platform, and Power BI, in addition to reports of lagging authentication requests taking up to 10 minutes to complete. The company acknowledged the issues and said the outage was caused by an unexpected usage spike that resulted in Azure Front Door and Azure Content Delivery Network components performing below acceptable thresholds. Security expert Kevin Beaumont speculated that the issues may have been caused by a botnet-generated distributed denial-of-service attack. And now we'd like to give a huge thanks to our sponsor, DropZone AI. DropZone AI's analyst investigates alerts and responds to threats with unmatched speed and precision. No playbooks, no code required. Transform your SOC's performance with a three-month free trial at dropzone.ai. That's D-R-O-P-Z-O-N-E dot A-I. Average data breach cost nears $5 million. On Tuesday, IBM's Poneman Institute released its annual Cost of a Data Breach report. The report revealed that the global average cost of a data breach grew by 10% to $4.88 million in 2024. The U.S. registered the highest average in the world at $9.36 million per breach, followed by the Middle East. Among industries, healthcare took the top spot again this year at $9.77 million per breach, followed by financial firms at just over $6 million. The most common initial attack vectors were compromised credentials, phishing, cloud misconfiguration, zero-day vulnerabilities, business email compromise, and malicious insiders. On a positive note, the report found organizations using AI and automation across prevention workflows saved an average of $2.2 million per breach compared to orgs not using those technologies. Additionally, average time to identify and contain a breach fell to a seven-year low of 258 days. Criminals selling Gen AI creds in underground markets. Researchers have spotted cyber criminals selling account credentials belonging to corporate end users of Gen AI services, including ChatGPT, Quillbot, 
Notion, Hugging Face, and Replit. The researchers say about 400 Gen AI creds get sold every day. One underground marketplace was advertising GPT-4 API keys starting at a price of $15. Threat actors leveraged Gen AI creds to create phishing and malware campaigns, produce chatbots, and steal sensitive corporate data. The researchers recommend that organizations monitor employee usage of cloud-based Gen AI offerings, encourage Gen AI vendors to implement web auth in their portals, use use passkey security, and use dark web monitoring services. Massive SMS stealer campaign targets Android devices. Researchers at Zimperium have discovered a malware campaign infecting Android devices in 113 countries. The campaign utilizes Telegram bots to deploy over 107,000 distinct malware variations. The malware transmits captured SMS messages containing one-time 2FA passwords to a site called FastSMS.SU. Victims may incur unauthorized charges or illegal activities traced back to their device and number. The researchers advise users to limit application permissions, ensure Play Protect is active, and not download APK files outside of Google Play. Senate calls for expanded Secret Service cybercrime probes. A new bipartisan bill was introduced this week and would expand the Secret Service's authority to investigate transnational cybercrime tied to digital assets. The Combating Money Laundering and Cybercrime Act of 2024 would allow the Secret Service to investigate crimes connected to digital asset transactions, structured transitions, unlicensed transmissions, and fraud against financial institutions. The bill also mandates a government accountability report within a year to assess law enforcement's ability to detect and deter money laundering. And that does it for today's cybersecurity headlines, but we've got a unique Super Cyber Friday coming up this week, giving you an opportunity to ask questions of our CISO guests. We're calling it Hacking CISOs, and if you've ever had a burning question about CISO careers, technology, communicating with the business, now is your time to ask. The episode will feature Defense in Depth co host Steve Zalewski and Bill Harmer, operating partner and CISO at Craft Ventures. It all starts at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, so head on over to our events page at CISOseries.com to register. Reporting for the podcast that brings you more of the top cyber news stories and more cowbell, I'm Sean Kelly. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.